Let's take a moment to discuss the universal control application when connected to a Studio 192. So I've got my universal control launcher open over here. Currently only have one audio interface being the Studio 192 connected to the system. So we see this graphic over here and we can click this. When we click this, it automatically opens up our universal control application. Now I wanna to try to go over as much as I can in this particular application without overloading you. So let's start with the basics. Any channel that you have selected in the console of the universal control application, you'll notice that we have all of the parameters up top here. We have our gate, our compressor, our EQ, and our limiter. So for example, if I select channel one, here would be all of the fat channel settings available for channel one. I'm currently on channel three with my voiceover microphone. And in addition to being able to adjust the fat channel, you can see that I can also adjust my level. So I can bring things up or down in terms of increasing or decreasing what I'm hearing. Now, it's also worth mentioning that we have numerous different mixes that we can listen to. And each of these mixes are routed to a pair of outputs. So for example, I'm on my main mix right now, which is the exact same mix that's connected to my main speakers. And then we have our line out one, two, our line out three, four, line out five, six, and line out seven and eight. Each of these tabs over here, as you can see, represents a completely different mix, but of the same inputs. If I wanted to copy a mix, so for example, let's say I wanted to copy my main mix, and I wanted to have that mix come out, mix seven and eight, which is connected to a headphone amplifier of some sort, I could just click paste mix. Now you'll notice if I click mix seven and eight, it has the exact same mix as my main mix. So the thing to take from this is that each one of these tabs over here represent a set of outputs on the Studio 192. So the main represents our main outs, mix one, two represents line out one, two, mix three, four represents line out three, four, five, six represents line out five, six, and seven and eight represents line out seven and eight. And we can do things such as copy and paste if we wanted to adjust our mixes. All right, so the main outs is what's coming out of my main outs over here, so fair enough. Now, in addition to that, we have an effects A and we have an effects B. So when we have a mix selected and I click effects A or effects B, I can simply go in and dial up the effects. So here's my effects A, and effects A is actually routed to a reverb. So if we go into our effects over here, you can see that we have an ambience. Let's go ahead and change this to a plate. And then we've got a mono delay. Let's change this to a ping pong delay. So now if I come into my main mix over here and I wanted to listen to my effects channels, I could do that by dialing up the send amounts over here. So this is very easy to do. And in terms of setting them, I can just click my main mix level and here's my faders for my effects A and effects B. So I can bring these up or down and these are obviously global faders in terms of being the auxiliary returns of these effects. So next up, let's go ahead and let's just click this channel over here. If we click this little arrow icon, you'll see we have talk, talk assign, mutes, effects A mute, and effects B mute. Now these are really handy to have available here as well. Let's take a look at talk assign. When you click talk assign, we can route or assign or designate what channels or what outputs are going to receive our talk back. So currently I have this set to HP1 and HP2. Now on the Studio 192 system that I've connected, I currently have an HP4 routed to my line out seven and eight, which of course is mix seven and eight. So I could designate that I want my talk back to come out of my headphone one direct, headphone two direct, and also my mix seven and eight. So I can do all this routing directly here. Now it's also worth mentioning that I can also do this routing and have additional control over my audio device controls directly from within Studio One. So as long as we have the option to show our audio device controls, which we can get to by clicking this wrench, clicking show audio device controls, all of this talkback assign and the talkback open and close that I have, I can adjust this directly from within Studio One. So talkback targets, I have HP1, HP2, and also mix seven and eight. 
If you recall, we set these up in universal control, but let's go ahead and let's add a new talkback target. For example, I also want my talkback to come out of my mix 5.6. Now my mix 5.6 is connected to my line out 5 and 6 over here. So now if I go back into universal control, you'll see that that one is also enabled. Now let's talk about some other options that we have. If we click these gear icons, either the one in the top right, which is kind of a global system setting or preferences, we have some additional information. So for example, I could choose to show or hide my ADAT. I can choose to designate a talkback source in terms of my microphones. It's worth mentioning that the minute you designate a talkback source, that you actually lose that from your universal control. So for example, let's have a look over here at our application. Let's take a look at mic eight. This is currently available as a choice in terms of an input, but if I was to go ahead and designate mic eight or input eight as a talkback source, you'll see that that's disappeared. That's because when you assign it as a talkback source that it automatically takes over and that's no longer available as an input in terms of being able to use that to record. Now it's also worth mentioning that we also have an onboard mic as well on the Studio 192. So that if we don't want to use up one of our inputs, we can use the onboard mic, but it's worth mentioning if that your Studio 192 is in a rack anywhere from five or more feet away from you, that you will also hear all the ambience of the room and that you'll have to boost your gain quite high in order to be able to hear this. Now next up, I wanna take a look at the option that we have over here, this gear icon. So for example, let's say that, let's just choose my mic that I'm using right now for my voiceover. Let's go ahead and let's close all of our headphone routing. We don't need to see any of that. So we'll go back to our main mix over here. So if I select this channel, which currently has my voiceover mic and select this gear icon, First of all, you'll notice that we have all of these different icons that we can use. So I currently have this set to a mic, but I could easily change that to speech. And we can scroll up or down to get more choices available. So for example, if this was something different, like for example, if it was snare drum, I could choose that. So we have the option to choose these different icons, which can be visually helpful in terms of setting up a mix. Now we can obviously choose these different categories if we wanted to limit what icons represent themselves. So for example, in vocals now, this kind of just limits it to something that it might be more useful to me. So I could choose vocal mic or lead vocals or whatever the case is. Very easy for me to select these icons. Now next up, we have the select channel color. And this I find very useful to identify certain elements. So for example, if I selected channel two over here, which is currently gray, as long as we select this gear icon, I can now select the channel color and for example, could change this to something else. Let's change this to an aqua blue. Now, in addition to that, with respect to these colors, if we head back into our global settings, we can choose to colorize channels, which would allow us to see all of the channel in color versus just on the bottom over here. So for example, let's deselect this. And now you can see that this is just on the bottom. But if I enable this preference, colorize channels, we can see that the whole entire channel strip has the color. Personally, I prefer to work with this method. Now let's talk about pre-send and post-send. Now by default, all of your channels will be set to pre-send. Now what this means is that if you're using universal control to monitor when you're recording, whether you're using Studio One or a third-party DAW, that any DSP-based fat channel effects that you have on the channels you will be monitoring through those, but what actually gets sent out to the record path through core audio is going to be a dry, unaffected signal. So for example, this particular channel that I'm using for my voiceover mic, if I was to go ahead and engage this EQ, even though I can hear this right now in terms of what I'm monitoring, and if I was to bring up the highs on here, my voice would have a lot of highs on it, or if I was to, for example, bring them down, my voice would become really dull, you're not gonna hear anything different because what's being sent to the record path is pre-effects, so pre-DSP fat channel effects. Now, if I wanted to print the DSP processing that I'm applying and actually send that through the record path, then I can click this gear icon and I can use this post-send adjustment. So let's go back in here. I'm just gonna boost this up a little bit. 
We'll click this gear. The minute I click post send, you're going to hear a drastic difference in terms of the EQ or the tonality of my voice. So now I don't hear anything different because I've always been monitoring through this, but now this is being sent to the record path. And then again, if I was to go ahead and decrease this, you'd obviously hear my voice get very dull. But if I come back in here and click pre-send, then even though I still hear my voice as being dull, what you are going to be hearing that's being sent to the record path is this EQ move. Let's go ahead and just take this off. So like I said, by default, this is set to pre-send. But if ever you're in a situation where you know exactly what you want, maybe you're just applying some light compression and EQ to your settings and you want to actually print or render those, all we have to do, click the channel we want, click this gear icon, and make sure we click this post send option. That'll do the trick. Next up, let's take a look at the headphone routing. Now, in order to get to the headphone routing, you have to either click either one of these, this one or this one, and then you'll see we have this headphone routing options over here. Now this can be a little bit confusing, but the way to think about this is the headphone routing allows you to listen to any one of these mixes that you have set up. So currently I'm connected to headphone one and I'm listening to the main mix. If I toggle to mix one, two, which is the line out one, two, the studio 192. And if I was to take this and change this headphone one source to mix one, two, all of a sudden I don't hear anything in terms of my voiceover coming through. Now, obviously, if I was to go ahead and start dialing this up, now I'm starting to hear this mix because I'm actually listening to this low latency mix. And keep in mind, we have all of these different mixes that we can choose to monitor. So I'm gonna go and change my headphone source back to my main mix. Now keep in mind that this actually also corresponds and directly correlates to your Studio One as well. So for example, right now, my main outs are assigned as my main outs and they're coming out of my mains in Studio One. So unless I'm using hardware direct monitoring, which we're gonna get into in another video, anytime I adjust my headphone one source or headphone two source from within my DAW, I will be routing my headphone one or headphone two based upon these mixes in universal control. And then last up, we have our basic monitoring function. So we have mono, and as you can see, these are following in Studio One. We have our main dim. And then of course we have our talk option, which we can reveal just by clicking this little arrow. And that of course follows as well in Studio One. And then lastly, whatever input source you have designated within universal control for your talk back source, we can adjust the preamp levels either from Studio One. So for example, I'll adjust it here and you'll see that it's updated in universal control, or I can also bring it down in universal control, and then you'll see that it's updated in Studio One. And like I said, this talkback volume is based upon which talkback mic source you've designated, either in universal control or in Studio One. And like I said, this is bi-directional. We can choose any one of these sources as a talkback source. Now last up, I just wanna have one really quick look. For example, if we head over to one mic one over here and we head over to this drop down section, you can see that we have these different categories where we can choose between you know anything from all drum, percussion, guitar, keys, vocal, strings. So for example, we could choose keys over here and then we could choose Piano Bright, which is a preset, and then we could addition this preset in real time while we're passing audio through it, we could change. And then if we don't like it, we could simply go ahead and reset. So it's very easy for us to choose between these different presets. And if we like it, we can simply exit. And now we've essentially loaded that preset onto the currently selected channel that we had. So for example, very easy for us to determine whether we like something. And if we do like it, we can just go ahead. And now we've gone ahead and loaded that preset. And this is very easy for us to just toggle between the different categories that we have. For example, guitar, electric bass. We can addition this if we like it, or if we don't like it, we can simply reset it and then exit. And of course we could do other things as well, such as copying and then potentially moving to another input and then pasting. So a very, very powerful system. Once you understand it, once you understand how to use it, 
you can get a lot done simply by monitoring through the universal control application. And you have the advantages of the inbuilt DSP fat channels that can be used in addition to creating multiple low latency monitor mixes that can be used on your outputs. And also not to mention the onboard built-in effects that we have in terms of reverb and delay that we can use to be giving an artist a little bit of ambience or effects as they're recording. Thank you.